Thank you, Mr. D. It affords us a chance to relax, and we can conduct our business in complete privacy. Ciao, Mr. D. Fine, thanks. After all, how many places can you go these days where you are completely alone? Let's face it, what we have to discuss today, we certainly don't want on the 6 o'clock news. Joseph, I want you to make a reservation for Harry on the midnight plane to Chicago so that he gets there in time to kill Renty. It's as good as done. Kill Renty. You want it done before the week is out. And, gentlemen, we must come to some conclusion on McGregor. You mean whether we kill him? Not whether, how. Or when we kill him. Joseph. I'm afraid this job is going to be your assignment. I don't know, me killing McGregor. He's like a brother to me. He is your brother. <laughs> Fortunately, he's the only person alive who can link the four of us together. The only man that knows we're in the rackets. He must be killed. But he's my brother. He won't talk. He already has. He mentioned Chicken Little. Chicken Little? But Mr. D, he's just a kid. He don't even know the meaning of them words. But he might find out. If by accident he puts two and two together, the organization, the syndicate, is finished. And so are we. He has to die. Now, gentlemen, remember, what has been said here today must remain a secret between the four of us. You, 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 me, and him. <laughs> Who's gonna kill you? You don't even know what they look like. I don't have to know what they look like. They know what I... <laughs> they know what I look like. And they got my identification card. They got my driver's license. They know I know they're in the rackets. And I can link the four of them together. I'm in a lot of... Oh, uh, I know about Chicken Little. Chicken Little? Uh-oh, now he knows about Chicken Little. He's in trouble. They're gonna kill us all. Get a cop. Son. Oh. Yeah. We want to help you. But just give us one clue. One clue. They were real big, and they had guns, and they liked to hit you a lot. One of them had real nice hair. The voice. That's how I could identify one of them. He had a real deep voice, like, uh, Joseph, get a reservation for Harry to go to Chicago and kill Renty. I'll never forget that voice. All right, let's get to the bottom of this. That's the voice. That's the killer. <laughs> this is a man who thinks four killers are after him. Captain, you gotta help me. I don't think I know. I was a... Oh. <laughs> late. I'm usually fully clothed at all times. All I did was go into the steam bath to lose a couple pounds. Now it looks like I'm gonna lose 160 of them. Me. Well, I, I don't even know these guys or anything. I was just laying yes, there. Mr. Street, it is our duty to protect our citizens, but we must know what we're protecting them from. Now, you give us one concrete piece of evidence and we'll swing into action. What you're telling me is you're not gonna help me. Pardon me, sir. 
Hello? What can I do for you? I can't even answer to your sign. What sign? You know, the sign over by the pump? She put that up again. She? She? My daughter. Your daughter put up a sign, man wanted? Uh-huh. Oh. Well, I'm interested in a job, not a wife. Thanks, Andy. <laughs> Susan feels I gotta have more help. Oh. Do you? I don't know. Right man came along, I might have a job for him. We do a lot of repair work here. You know anything about engines? Well, I'll tell you the truth, sir. You don't know about engines, I can't hire you. What do you want to know about engines? <laughs> What's your name, young man? My name is, uh, uh, my name, uh, my name. I don't know my name like I know my own name. It's, uh, uh, horsepower. What? Uh, uh, horse powers. I'm oh, well, glad to know you, Horace. Somebody you know? I hope not. Oh, that's Mrs. Poor's car. I recognize the dent in the back. She's a good customer. Only one way to find out if a man's fit for the job. Go take care of that car, Horace. Who? You, Horace. Oh, me, Horace. You, Simon. Okay, good. I'll do it. Hello? Hello? I'd like some gas, please. Yes, ma'am. Windows and everything. Oh, thanks. You know, this is the best station at 20 miles of here. It's a happy haven for harried motors. You know, every facet of gas. That's uh, two dollars, please. Uh, good, thank you. And uh, come back, ask for me. My name is uh, uh, Horace Powers. Come back, I'll be here. Glad to hear that. Hello, I'm Susan Kellerman. So am I. I mean, uh, I'm Horace Powers. It's my new name. I mean, I'm new here. And doing pretty good, too. You got yourself a job, Horace. Thanks, Mr. Kellerman. That makes me very happy. That makes me happy, too. Maybe now, Dad, you can take time off. I'm not going into that again, Susan. I hired him because he needs some help, and that's all. Oh, that's Henry. I got change of spark plugs. Oh, here's the two dollars I got from the lady and the dog. Thanks. I was hoping I could find the right man. Someone Dad would trust. I think maybe I found him. Thank you, Susan. Come on, I'll show you your room. Oh, it depresses me. It makes me sick. 35 years of building an organization. Branch offices in 50 states. Over 200 representatives in the field, and we can't find one little nobody named Buddy Overstreet. Well, it is a big country. Excuses. After all my teaching, after all my training, this is what you say? I'm sorry, Dad. <laughs> Give it to me! <laughs> well, here's some good news. One of our representatives saw Overstreet in Rockford, Illinois. Joseph, turn on the closed-circuit television. I want to send a message to all our mobile units in the Midwest. First definite lead on Buddy Overstreet. He was last seen on Route 90 in Rockford, Illinois, heading north. This man must be apprehended at all costs. The subject is of medium height, chubby. Kind of cute. <laughs> Those of you who don't have color TV sets in your car, the subject is uh, sandy-haired and brown-eyed. Now remember, 
Buddy Overstreet is wanted dead or dead. <laughs> I want you to take the first plane you can to Rockford. I want you to be in charge of this operation. You can count on me, Mr. D. We'll have one of our cars meet you at the airport. It's only a matter of time now. Sooner or later, Overstreet will have to go to a barbershop for a haircut, or a newsstand for a comic book, or get some tangerines in a supermarket. Wasn't so bad now, was it? Aren't you coming in? No, I'll stay and watch your motorcycle. Well, nobody will take it. Well, it's too crowded in there. I want to get the fresh air. All right. What took you so long? I had to wait for Harry to kill and dress it. Do a good job. Some guys are just butchers. Harry's an artist. Are you sure you got the right one? Sure, I'm sure. I like my chicken little. <laughs> hey, you! That guy's trying to steal Simon's motorcycle. Well, you're the sheriff. Stop him. Poor father of yours. He tried to lift up a rear axle and he threw his back out again. I'm Doc Thompson. All right. You better go and help him pack, huh? Is there anything I can do? Yes, you've got to take over and run the station for a couple of days. Me? Simon's lucky to have you. Here's your first customer. Fill up. Yes, sir. You want me to check under the hood? Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> and by the way, check the water. <laughs> Where'd that guy go? Well, how should I know? Oh, did you hear me? Check the water. Yes, <laughs> Holding something in there. <laughs> Pal, check the windshield. What a rag. <laughs> I'm gonna take a stretch. Now. Beats me. 
Shorty, we get changed. <laughs> well, let's hold this up. I'm waiting for my change. Get it, let's go. Susan, I'm sorry. I can't stay. I can't help. I gotta go. Please don't lose your confidence now. It's not that. I, Boy, Simon's condition isn't good. I've got to get him to the hospital. You've got to stay. All right, I'll stay. Good boy. Thank you, Lars. I'll see you when we get back. I hope. I'm very disappointed in you, Wendell. Very disappointed. Mr. D, despite what you heard, Overstreet ain't on Route 90. We heard more, Wendell, and we think he is. Junior, the Overstreet file, please. <laughs> Read the transcript of the phone call. Conversation between Buddy Overstreet, address unknown, and his brother Albert Overstreet, residing at 122 Mapleton Road, Lawrence, Long Island. This conversation was wiretapped at 9.03 a.m. Thursday morning. It was a clear morning. This Just a <laughs> Buddy. Hello, Albert. It's me. Albert. Buddy, buddy, it's you. Where are you? Buddy, Albert, I can't tell you. Albert, I'm worried about you. Buddy, Albert, don't worry. Albert, are you all right? I want to come to you, buddy. You must tell me where you are. Don't act. It's just reading. <laughs> Albert, I just called to tell you I'm fine. I gotta go now, Albert. Albert, buddy, are you sure you're all right? Gee. They have a nice family relationship, don't they, Dad? <laughs> I gotta go now, Albert. Bye. End of transcript. Overstreet don't say nothing about being on Route 90. Right after the brother hung up, he got in his car and took off. He must have placed the call. Joseph and the ape are trailing him now. Junior, the map. <laughs> the red line is the route the brother is taking. Notice, if you will, it is Route 90. I guess this means I'm not going to be part of the executive training program anymore. I'll make that decision tomorrow. That's all, Wendell. Goodbye. But, Mr. D... Junior will show you to the door. <laughs> but, Mr. D... Goodbye, Wendell. Toast Junior to Buddy Overstreet. Short may he live. Uh, Horace, I... Oh, I didn't see you coming. I kind of figured that. You better get going. Visiting hours are over at the hospital in another hour. Oh, I'm staying overnight. I'm bringing Dad home in the morning. Great. Uh, don't worry about anything. I'll lock up. Horace, I don't know how to thank you for making all of this. Please don't. I embarrass easily. Dad's going to need some help around here, permanently. A partner. Susan, I really don't know anything about running a garage. Oh, I know that. See, I... You do? Since the very first day. Then how come I was hired? Management liked the way you looked. Thanks, management. <laughs> You're going to be late. You'll stay? I'd like to. Please remember that, I'd like to. Now, you better get going. Give my best to your father. Be with you in a minute, sir. Buddy! Albert! Buddy, you're all right! Albert! So glad you're home! Albert, what are you doing here? How'd you get here? 
Where'd you find me? I traced the call. Buddy, I was worried. It sounded like you were in trouble. Buddy, you've got to come home with me. I'll protect you. Albert, the only protection I got is to keep running or find out the secret of Chicken Little. But, buddy, what's a Chicken Little? I don't know, Albert, but I do know one thing. You gotta go home to Ruth. Oh, They're really? closing in on me. They were right here in this gas station. I waited on them myself. But, buddy, wait a minute. If they were here and they saw you and left, what are you worried about? They're not gonna look for you in the same place again. You are safe. I'm safe? Yeah, Albert, you're right. I'm... Albert, what's that over there? What's what? That black car? Those guys must be taking the same trip as me. Those guys? I was beginning to think they were following me, but now that your visitors have already been here, we don't have to worry about that. Hey, I got a surprise, and all I brought you? Ruth's cookies. You know what else you brought me? Uh, My killers. <laughs> oh, buddy, I didn't mean to bring them. I'll stay here. I'll help you, buddy. I don't Let want me. you to stay, Albert. I don't want you to get what? hurt. Something funny's going on. Albert? Gasoline, I fill them up for you. I get a good, uh, uh, I get you a uh, special regular gasoline, okay? Who are you, friend? Uh, I'm called Pancho Zapata Duncan Reynaldo. I fill them up for you, okay? There was another guy here. Dope from that car. Uh, senor, I'm the only dope here. The guy who was talking to the attendant. Oh, he, uh, he's out in the back of the shop. I go get him for you, okay? No, no, that's all right. We'll get him ourselves. Okay, I got to go now. Thank you, Mr. Overstreet. You're welcome. Watch out for the oil! So sudden, Mr. Kellerman. Leave? And I'm sorry about all the trouble, too. What trouble? Please let my brother out of the men's room. What is men's room? What brother? What happened? Susan, it's a long story and it's getting longer. Let us give you a lift. No, don't follow me. Go back. But where will you go? What will you do? I'll go someplace and make a new start. How? Where? I don't know, but someplace.